Hello world, welcome back to Razer RC. I want to shoot a video today uh, explaining how to install the FlySky FSGT5 receiver. This is the FSBS6 receiver and uh, basically the step-by-step -step procedure, what you want to do. So first of all, you got to uh, tape your uh, receiver into your receiver box, use some double-sided servo tape. Uh, I got that mount in there and I, I basically just wrapped the antenna around it. Um, you can also feed it through the uh, antenna tube if you're going to be doing a little more long distance but I don't, I don't generally drive like super far away so wrapping around is, is generally fine as well. Second thing you want to do is basically plug in the uh, wires so you've got basically uh, channel 1 which comes from your servo so plug in your servo with the black wire to the outside of the receiver so I'm going to plug that in right now inside channel 1 and then channel 2 is going to be your ESC so once again you want the black wire of the ESC going to the outside of the receiver box that's pretty much the same on every receiver I've ever used so I got that mount in there and then you know wrap up the wires in there um, and then the next thing you want to do is make sure the car is off of the ground you never want to do this with the car on the ground in case you accidentally um, you know hit the throttle or something it'll shoot off so we're going to go ahead and turn on the uh, radio so using model one and then um, what you want to do now is calibrate the throttle so anytime you're using a re new receiver and new radio uh, you need to calibrate the throttle uh, on your ESC first so it knows basically where full throttle is it knows where neutral is and then knows where full brake is so on this particular basically a, a rebranded hobby wing it's the Reedy uh, SC 600 BL what you got to do is hold down uh, the basically the button on the ESC when you when you turn on the switch and you hear it just beeping and so for this particular ESC you leave the radio at neutral you hit the button once then you go full throttle hit the button again and then you go full brake and hit the button a third time and then you can go ahead and lock, uh, release. And then now, as you can see, throttle works, uh, brake works as well, and we're we're good to go on the throttle side. And then the next thing you want to do is now calibrate the steering. So whenever I calibrate the steering on a new uh, car or new uh, radio and receiver, there's kind of a multi-step process I go through. The first thing I want to do is make sure your steering links are exactly the same length. Um, some cars have very different length steering links but on most modern cars you basically want both your left and your right steering length to be exactly the same length so I use a set of calipers and set those up and make sure that they're exactly the same. Next thing you want to do is drive the car uh, and um, set the uh, sub trim so on this particular kit on this particular radio we go down to sub trim and uh, you want to set the sub trim so that the car drives straight. Now I've already gone ahead and done that. So for example, at, uh, at initially out of the box, the sub trim is basically set to zero. And then you uh, drive the car. As you can see, the wheels actually are pointing a little bit left. So just drive it straight down the street on like a nice flat surface. Adjust the sub trim until the car drives perfectly straight and then go ahead and set that and in this particular case uh, right 25 will get that uh, steering perfectly straight. So now your car drives straight you've got the throttle set really the last thing you want to do is set your endpoints so on this particular radio the FlySky FS GT5 you go to EPA and uh, you'll see for steering there's basically right RBD which is basically right and then LFU which is left so what you want to do is basically go into uh, your values. Let's say you start at, um, sorry. Let's say you start at 100. And what you want to do is turn the car right and make sure the steering servo is not straining. You can hear it there. It's basically straining, it's making that whining noise and that's gone too far. So go ahead and reduce that. Try it again still straining at full right go ahead and reduce that some more try again still straining a little bit we're getting closer 
and we probably need to reduce it down to about 80. So 80% is not straining anymore. You've got full right now without the servo trying to overextend itself. Um, you might be able to get one or two more. That 81% is still not whining. At 82, it's whining. So 81 is basically max low for the right side. And then uh, we want to adjust the left side. So once again, uh, you can start at around 100%. That's what it's going to be out of the box. But you'll notice at 100% it's straining. So that's too high. So go ahead and reduce the steering for the left hand side. Still whining. Drop it some more. Still whining. Drop it some more. It's whining a little bit. So we're getting close. 77, it's not quite whining. We could try to up it a little bit. We can definitely do 79%, maybe try a couple more. 81, still okay, it's not whining. 82, it whines. So we can go ahead and set to 81%. So basically, um, you got your endpoints set. Now, if you actually have your uh, steering link set correctly, and you have your drag link here actually be the right length, uh, this one's not adjustable, but I had it straight. Then actually your left and right should be just about the exact same endpoints. Um, it's not always gonna be exact, but you know this one in particular, we got it perfectly right on. It, uh, it's perfectly centered, everything exactly straight, and we got full throw left, right with the same percentage. So once you're done with that, um, you basically have your car set up with your new receiver, you've got the throttle calibrated, you've got the steering calibrated, um, and you're ready to run. So yeah, hope that helped. Okay, here we are at the BMX park. The Flysky FS GT5. Just want to show you how it looks with SVC turned off, and then uh, we're going to turn it on and see how the truck drives a little differently. This is a Team Associated Reflex DB10, and as you can see, uh, the truck kind of fishtails a little bit. It's kind of uh, running around there, hard to get forward traction. I'm trying to drive it straight here over the jumps. Um, it's not too bad when the traction is decent, but once you kind of make a turn, once you try to make a, a, a hard left or a hard right, it kind of fishtail, as you can see, hard to get that forward traction going. Um, so yeah, a bit of a handful with two wheel drive. Um, I find on loose conditions like this, something like stability control actually does help quite a bit, uh, makes it easier to drive. You know, originally. Did not really think much of stability control, kind of thought it was a band-aid or a, a driver's aid that I didn't, was not really interested in, but uh, I've kind of changed my tune about that. So going through the menu system here, we're going to uh, show you what SVC looks like. First thing we do is turn it on, and then the one important thing you want to do with SVC is make sure it's calibrated correctly. So you need to calibrate it, hit the, the dial button. When you've got the truck basically on a flat surface pointed straight, um, that will basically set up where the steering and where the gyroscope is going to take effect. And then the settings I found to be the most useful is actually to um, use priority 95%. Um, that uses mostly the stability control when you're turning the, the wheel left and right. And then what I like for stability control, I'm sorry, steering and throttle gain is 45%. It gives you a little bit of oversteer, so you can make those tight corners, but uh, helps you a lot within the loose stuff when you're trying to go straight or make uh, less aggressive turns. So as you can see, truck is driving a lot more straight. Uh, pretty much goes where you point it. Um, makes a huge difference. It's, it's kind of surprising how much SVC actually really helps you uh, in two-wheel drive especially. Four-wheel drive I don't find it super important but with two-wheel drive in this type of loose dirt um, it helps a lot and um, you know even here with the Reflex DB10 it's quite impressive how much better it drives with the SVC turned on. So yeah pretty impressive overall. I do like the Flysky FS GT5 solid construction uh, really good radio and um, yeah, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it.